Today, we get to talk about unit testing. Hold on. Now, Ryan, you know you need to do a unit test before you check in. Isn't there supposed to be a... So I understand you've been traveling to Earth and telling developers not to unit test? Of course I've been traveling to Earth and telling developers not to unit test. I'm the devil! Are you letting me go? Okay, so maybe failing to test isn't evil, but there is the other extreme. Test-driven development was one of those fads that came out of the 90s, like pair programming and Limp Biscuit. And like Limp Biscuit, we all admitted to liking it at one time or another. But one of the most important concepts that came out of test-driven development was unit testing edge conditions. Let me show you why this can be so important. So let's say we're developing an application for the military where every seven days at a certain time, you're going to send out the same message. Now your task is to create a drop-down box and a submit button with a whole bunch of uh, times in it. A user can select the time, hit submit, and this goes to a text notification screen that just takes the current date, adds seven days to it, takes your hour, and substitutes it for the notification time. So that way the message will get sent out every seven days at a certain time. Okay, let's test this thing. So we're gonna select the hour. Let's just call it six. We're gonna hit submit. Let's see, did the hour get picked up? Yep, the hour got picked up at six. We're gonna create the new text notifications. Let's see what the hour is doing inside notification. We're gonna get the date time, date time now, and the date time today, it's uh, 123. Uh, so we're going to add seven days to 123. That should be 130. So we're going to set the next notification time at January 30th at six o'clock. January 30th, six o'clock a.m. We're good. Now it's Miller time. Until it isn't. There's no such thing as a 24th hour. Once hours hit 23, they loop back around to zero. You should have tested the edge conditions. This is gonna cause a major problem in the system and you let it through. So let's create a unit test so we can test these edge conditions. We're gonna add a new project, search for unit test. Since I'm doing a .NET Core project, I'm gonna use MS test. This is important because you can't mix frameworks. So now we got the unit test project down here and we have the test class right here. Now the key to unit testing is you're only testing small bits of functionality, preferably the edge conditions and one base condition. I usually hear the term arrange, act, assert when it comes to unit testing. You want to arrange a test, you want to act on that test, and then you want to assert to see if that test condition is true or false. Now the logic for text notification is up here in the business logic because you always split out your business logic, right? So in order to test this, I'm going to have to go down to dependencies under my unit test project. I'm going to have to add a reference to business logic. Now I can arrange my first test method by dropping in a reference to text notifications. And while I'm here, I'm also going to make this test method a little more understandable. So I'm going to call this test method base condition. Now, in order to make this a little more decoupled, I'm going to make a change to the set notification time. I'm going to decouple set notification time by passing in the base time and then having the date time D act off the base time. This is going to allow me to test things a little bit easier. Now, another thing you could do is pass the add days. This would help you remove even more dependencies. So in the future, this class could act for seven days, 14 days, however number of days you want. One more thing, the initial project was a quick uncluttered example. Now I'm gonna drop the property in there because this is probably what you'd have in production. Now here's the basic test plan. We're gonna create a date, in this case, January 1st, 2020. We're gonna set a notification time. So we're gonna say, hey, at 6 a.m., I want you to notify us in seven days. And then we're gonna test to make sure that eight days from now, the notification day will be eight. This is our basic base test. We're making sure that everything works. All right, now let's run this thing by going up to test, hit run all tests. And when the light is green, we're good. So now that we got the base test down, let's check the edge conditions. Now, if we go back to our combo box, the lowest possible number in the combo box is one. So let's create a new test that uses a notification time of one. And we're gonna run this test. And the test method low condition passes. So now let's test a high condition. If we go back to the main window in the combo box, the highest possible condition you have is 24 in the combo box. So let's test 24. We're gonna create a new test, call it test method con high condition, we're gonna set the notification time at 24 hours and we're gonna do the same thing, R equal eight. 
Let's see what happens. Boom. Well, it's better it happens here than in production. This is why it's so important to test edge conditions. You can catch a lot of things that you wouldn't normally find. And best of all, every time you run the test, all of your tests run. It's like having an army of testers at your beck and call. Best of all, if you check something in and then someone else changes your code a couple months later, the unit test will fail and they'll be able to go, whoa, what did I do wrong? And then maybe be able to fix it before it gets into production. So in a job interview, I don't expect you to know everything about test-driven development, but if you're asked about unit testing, at least say, yeah, I test edge conditions and base conditions when appropriate. Good luck on your next interview. Oh, come on, did anybody even test this?